All right, so we've just finished talking about queuing up a single experiment to run on the supercomputer, um, but typically we're not doing one experiment. We're, we're often doing a whole set of different experiments. Uh, I'm going to show you at least the basics of queuing up uh, multiple experiments with just one SBatch command. So, uh, so here we are in our supercomputer uh, directory, um, and there is this batch many uh, file. So let's edit that. And for this, uh, again, we we need to make the same changes that we did before. So we're still going to use the debug partition since since these are going to be short term experiments. This is all correct. Um, let's stick with two minutes for our purposes. Job name is fine. Fix this. And we also need to set this up properly. Okay. the The new thing here is that uh, is that we have added this extra line, this dash dash array line, and what this means is that um, we're actually queuing up not one experiment, but we're queuing up a total of four experiments. the 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 four experiments are numbered zero, one, two, and three, and how we use that integer is going to depend on. Uh, how we've configured the rest of our code. I'm going to show you one example, and, and then there are lots of things that one can do with this. So you'll notice um, down here, we're, we're still using XOR base that we've already developed. We're setting number of epochs to 10 just to make it uh, clean. Uh, and uh, let's set this. So, so EXP number here is is not a fixed number, but instead uh, this dollar here indicates that this is a variable within the bash the, the, the bash file itself. Um, so slurm array task ID, this variable gets assigned to this whatever this number is. So it'll be executed once where it's assigned to zero, another time where it's assigned to one, to two, to three. So, so we'll actually be queuing up four different experiments. And let me go ahead and set the number of hidden units to, uh, to 10, just so we have something unique to uh, look at there. And uh, that, that completes our, our, batch, our batch mini uh, program. All right, so so now uh, if we if we now call sbatch on our batch many, you'll see that that has been assigned a job number. And if we look at the queue, now you'll notice that it, we're still everything is still pending right now, um, but the job IDs. Uh, here has been augmented with this zero through three, and as the the jobs actually start running, you'll you'll start to see one row for each one of the running jobs. And now we wait. All right, what I had just started executing um, with epochs ten, it it went by so fast that I didn't get a chance to show you. Um, so I set epochs to hundred, restarted, uh, and hopefully now we have things uh, such that we can look at the, uh, the status of our experiment. Okay, so we're still uh, pending. Okay, we had to wait a little bit for those to get picked up, but you can see now there is, uh, when we look at the queue, there is now one row for every one of the running uh, experiments. There happen to be four CPUs uh, available, actually four cores available to execute on. And so all four of them started uh, running and quickly finished executing. So uh, at this point, it was five seconds execution time on each one of those. Uh, and then in just me, the time that I was talking, um, we finished execution. 
Um, you'll notice that the, the nodes that these are getting executed on are all the same. This just happens to be what happened in this situation. So each one of these nodes got one core, uh, sorry, each one of the experiments got one core on this, on, on the, this one node, um, but all of our nodes have uh, lots of cores available. Um, let's go ahead and look in the results directory. You'll see that we now have a, uh, a lot more uh, files. Um, uh, so you can, you can actually see uh, what well, each one of them got assigned as they started executing, got assigned their own unique job ID. So you can see 34, 35, 36, 37, uh, 39. So somebody else started executing there. Okay, so it is a little bit easier to look at the, the set of files in this format here, um, but you can see um, exp0, hidden 10 was one of our jobs. This was our next one. This was our next one here. Um, so that's exp0, one, two, and then number three is right here. So all four of those jobs got uh, executed uh, for us with just one call to the, to the batch, uh, to, to s batch. Um, so, so this is, this is one quick way to make use of that slurm array task ID variable, um, but there are a lot more clever ways of, of uh, using this, uh, and we'll talk about those kinds of things at a later time.